Our next speaker is Alberto Paluzzi, who's going to be talking about computational topology in Julia. Well, I will talk about uh, computational geometry, or better, I prefer, and geometry computing. Uh, I will show the roots of our project, the motivation and the development path, and the current status of packages. Actually, we started doing solid modeling in the 80s when uh, people used the symbolic machine, uh, Lisp machine, for doing that. We started on PC in this, and uh, programming uh, in Pascal. Um, in, in those years, we generated, we built with our students the first solid modeler or a PC uh, in the same period, uh, fully fledged uh, solid modeler, uh, including uh, removal of hidden surfaces, for example. There were no uh, specialized hardware zeta buffers at that time. Um, 10, 15 years later, uh, we defined a geometry language on the, on the root of the Bacchus FL language. You know, Bacchus was the head of the team who developed Fortran. He received the, um, okay, uh, in, we, are, we added uh, a geometric data type to his FL language, and with that we realized a geometric language where shapes were generated by evaluating expressions in the language itself. Uh, our language PLASM was ported to Python at the beginning of the 2000 years. Uh, you see there two um, architectural models, the, um, the church of Santo Stefano Rotondo in Rome, which is considered a sort of meta-model of the heavenly Jerusalem and the Leaning Tower of Pisa. This is in, was done in Python maybe 10 years ago. Uh, we are now bringing our um, knowledge in geometric modeling to Julia, making some particular kind of choice. In particular, I, be I, I believe that there is a dramatic increase in size, diversity, complexity of geometric data with point clouds, meshes, boundary, nervous representation, and a lot of other techniques. But recent applications, in particular medical 3D, but not only that, uh, require the convergence of data structures because uh, the systems uh, should interoperate uh, with uh, knowledge of different domains. So we need to rethink some foundations of geometric and topological computing. For example, in solid modeling, you may find a lot of very, very complex data structures, very complex, which is so is pretty difficult to make a system, different system interoperate. Our idea was to make solid modeling and other kind of application of geometric computing using only sparse matrices, in particular binary sparse matrices. You can see here, for example, okay, the goal uh, is that of uh, compute the chain complex induced by um, the space partition generated by a set of geometric objects. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, have studied some algebraic, some algebraic topology. 
Nobody? <laughs> Very few. <laughs> okay. Uh, the chain complex uh, is uh, a, a set of... Uh, Linear space, right, it simplifies very, very much a set of linear spaces uh, uh, and uh, of the, of chains, which can be considered sets of cells of the space of dimension 0, 1, 2, 3, if we stay in 3D, uh, with, oper with linear operators in between, operators of boundary and co-boundary. Uh, actually, we start started from uh, geometric information, uh, we compute a representation of such a a representation of such operators. And you see here, actually, the binary representation of the boundary three operators. But, well, here, each row is the representation contains all the information needed to generate one of the pieces of the decomposition of space generated by three cubes, uh, which such pieces we can uh, generate any Boolean expression. This is a more beautiful picture. Uh, you, you see here the intersection of five cubes, just the boundary of the cubes. And this is the set of three cells of the space partition generated by uh, that, the arrangement of the space is called. Uh, you can see the elementary cells are maybe quite complex. For example, with interior holes. The only constraint is that they must be connected. Uh, a 2D example. And actually, we can reduce the evaluation of, Boole of Boolean expressions to the evaluation of a binary matrix. We can see here that after the space decomposition in three chain, we can see each uh, geometric object, A, B, C, in this case, is a string of zero and one, corresponding actually to the elementary cells of the space decomposition, in this case, nine elements. So we can solve any uh, Boolean expression just by computing by column uh, on this binary matrix. You can see some expression here. In solid modeling, it's typical to have uh, the so-called constructive solid geometry, which is a tree where you have elementary solids on the leaves and uh, operations on or a fine transformation on the nodes. Well, we can revisit this approach just starting by the primitive sets, uh, by the primitive objects, computing the chain complex, and in particular, the linear space of three uh, cells and reducing uh, the original computation to evaluation of a binary formula between, Boolean, between uh, strings uh, 0 and 1. Work in progress. Uh, we are working on, different, on several um, packages. There is a native uh, OpenGL viewer Uver GL. I don't have time to show you, but linear algebra representation, alpha structure for multidimensional simplicity or complexes to compute to DLNA uh, complexes and alpha shapes and other packages made by my former students. Well, this is all. I wanted to show you some execution, but the time is too short.
Thank you. Are there any questions? For the binary sparse arrays that you showed, is there a reason they're not um, bit arrays and they're int eight? Like, are you doing operations that require them to be int eight, or could they be bit arrays and maybe save space, go faster? Currently, we are developing uh, just uh, uh, making attention to the um, to the meat of the methods, and not uh, the, very much uh, looking at the, the to optimizing the execution or for now at least. So they are standard uh, at a basic array of Julia. Thank you, Alberto. Um, uh, hello. Uh, are we starting?